All right. Um, Let's talk about the Nightmare Before Christmas. Sponsored by Coke and Whiskey. We enter on this awesome autumn forest and then you like enter into these trees that all have like specific um, faces on them that's like Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, Easter, blah blah blah. And of course we go down the Halloween town one, which is my favorite. Um, and you enter into the world of the Halloween town and... This like skeleton man named Jack Skeleton, which I'm just like... Really? Your last name is Skeleton? That's like my last name being like Black. Jack Skellington, who is the king of um, Halloween, basically. He's the Pumpkin King. Um, he's not satisfied. He's been the Pumpkin King for pretty much all of his life. Jack Skellington is like, even though I'm dead and I'm a Skellington and I'm dead inside, like, there must be more to life. And he goes on a long walk through the forest. He sleepwalks. We meet his adorable little dog, Zero. And he stumbles upon these trees. But these trees have like their, these doors. And so like he opens this door that has like a Christmas tree on it. And he like enters this like Christmas world. And everyone's like happy and there's snow. And Jack Skeleton is like, where am I? Like, what is this? Oh my gosh. Like, and he just sings about how awesome Christmas is. What's this? What's this? And it's like, it's like a song. I don't really know the song. I just know like, what's this? What's this? And then, you know, cut to Halloween Town. Everybody's freaked out. They're like, where's Jack? Where's Jack? They sing a song about it. Where's Jack? And he shows up on like a snowmobile and he's like, I know what we gotta do. And he holds town meeting and everybody goes because that's what they do. They support each other and they go to town meetings. They probably vote. And so Jack Skeleton is like, okay, I can be Santa. And I can, I can give toys to the, to the kids of the world. He's like, you know, let's do it. Let's let's do Christmas. Why not? You know, like fuck Halloween. We're gonna we're gonna have Christmas. Sally, who is like Raggedy Ann, but she's like death, like emo Raggedy Ann. But she's like this patchwork girl. She's just like no, <laughs> we have to be Halloween. That's what we do. Jack just fucks everything up. Like I love him so much. I had a huge crush on Jack. With I don't know what that says about me, but he hires the henchmen, Boogeyman's henchmen, which are three children. So they go and they like capture Sandy Claus and bring him. And Jack's like, "Nice to meet you. I'm gonna take your hat. Go keep him somewhere safe so we can take care of Christmas." And the like henchmen are like, hee we're gonna take you to the boogeyman, he's gonna eat you. <laughs> so we take Sandy to the boogeyman, and Sally's like, no! And Jack is like, Christmas. And he like gives all the children of the world like, these like Halloween gifts. Like I think it's like, this kid like a shrunken head. And he, you know, delivers his presents and they terrify everyone. And everybody's like, what <laughs> Santa? Basically, they send out like the fucking militia. Like there's a military that's gonna bring this preposter down and um, they shoot cannons at Jack and oh, and Zero's like Rudolph because his nose is red, it's so cute. But they shoot him down. And so um, this is, I'm not gonna lie, this is where I fell asleep. And he's like, I am Jack the Pumpkin King. And then he realizes like, oh, I fucked up. I gotta go find Sandy Claus. So he runs down this tunnel and they go to Boogeyman and Jack fucks Boogeyman up, frees Santa. Santa's free. He, you know, goes, he puts his little finger in his nose and went up a tiny chimney. Jack is like, you know, he's looking around and all you see Sally like walking into the cemetery and then they like share this beautiful moment and they're on this like creepy like twisty mountain. <laughs> I think he like gets with the, the Raggedy Ann doll. Basically the moral of the story is like don't deviate from what you know. <laughs> Basically. 
stick to your own home, don't venture out, probably don't celebrate Christmas. This has been Scary Stories. No, this has been Christmas Stories. We are going to tell you the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> This story is sponsored by Cranberry Vodka. I am drinking whiskey and Coke. You know Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitz. I think I said Comet twice. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph. He's famous for a reason. And this story is gonna tell you why. It's Christmas Eve and all of the reindeer are playing around. They're celebrating uh, like Christmas. They're getting ready for Christmas. They're so excited and they're playing in the snow and ice skating and shit. And I don't know if it's puberty or what, but Rudolph comes out and they just, Rudolph has this honking shiny bread, bread, red nose. <laughs> All the reindeer are like mean to him, which is like such a weird thing to be like, we're gonna be mean to you and bully you because your nose is red and it like glows in the dark. I don't know, whatever. I guess, you know, like humans make fun of people for stupid stuff, reindeer make fun of people for stupid stuff too, whatever. And I think that a lot of us can really identify with being pushed aside from society because of our differences. It's Christmas Eve and Santa's like, Yo, I'm here. I'm here. We're gonna go deliver the presents now. So, I guess this one Christmas, like, it's super foggy. But it's weird because, like, how is it foggy around the whole world, Santa Claus? All of the other reindeer, you know, they come out and get on their lassos or um, harnesses. And um, Santa, you know, says, on Dasher, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Blonner, on Dixon, and pfft, they go off into the sky. But holy shit, is it foggy tonight. And before you know it, they crash. They crash into a snowy bank, a bank of snow, and all of the reindeer are dead. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. None of the reindeer are dead. They get up, they don't, they're fine. So Santa, you know, uh, sneaks, gets into Rudolph's bedroom and um, wakes him up and is like, yo, Rudolph, I think that your nose is the key to our success tonight. Rudolph was like, yeah, I guess it is kind of weird that my nose glows. So then Rudolph, you know, goes to the front of the sleigh, they zoom back off and what do you know? Rudolph's nose is the perfect thing. It's exactly what they needed to be able to see through the fog. They have a perfect view of the night. And let me tell you, when Rudolph comes home, they are treated like a celebrity, like, Look at me now, here's my, like... <laughs> and everybody says, oh my god, Rudolph, you saved Christmas. And so, honestly, that's it. That's the story of Rudolph and how he became so famous. And the moral of the story is... Don't make fun of people, because, like, I don't know, I feel like that's stupid, too. Like, it's like, it shouldn't be like, don't make fun of people, because, like, you never know what that thing that you're making fun of might come in handy. I feel like, like, don't make fun of people because, like, just don't make fun of people. And our differences should be celebrated. It's a beautiful tale. It's lasted many years for a reason. There you go. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. For you. Cheers. You'll go down in history. This is the story of Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. Sponsored by <coughs> Whiskey and Coke. <laughs> God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Marley was dead to begin with. How the book starts. It's so impressive. Scrooge and Marley, they were business partners, and Scrooge is just a miserable motherfucker, like old oh, cratchety ass white dude. <laughs>
Scrooge. Bob Cratchit works for Scrooge and it's December 24th. Doesn't matter. So he's like, bah humbug, I hate everything. Bitches are like, can I put one more piece of coal in the fire? And he's like, no. <laughs> Are you serious? They're like freeze. And you're like, I'm just so cold. And he's like, freeze. <laughs> and Bob is like, yo, Scrooge, can I please have tomorrow off? It's Christmas Day. And Scrooge is like, why do you need tomorrow off? It's a regular day. And, and Cratchit's like, I have a family. I have 24 children. And... And Scrooge is like, fine, but you better be here early the next morning. Scrooge goes home, you know, after his work day. So he goes into his house, who, which he does not light with um, electricity because it's too expensive. He uses one candle and, you know, he's going up to his bedroom with his giant fireplace and he's having his little dinner, which is like porridge and bread. I don't know. And he goes to sleep and while he's sleeping, this ghost like comes to his house and he's like ooh, ooh. and Bob is like what or not Bob Scrooge is like what is going on and looks up in his room and sees Marley Jacob Marley standing before him and he's like got chains and his head is wrapped like he went to the dentist and he has a toothache and basically he's like, Scrooge, I'm here because you need to fucking learn, dude. You need to learn a lesson. And you're going to be visited by some motherfuckers tonight. And you need to pay attention to what they say. And Scrooge is like, I don't believe you're here. This is definitely a dream. I definitely had a fatty piece of pork or some you know, extra sugar, this is totally a hallucination, but whatever, I'm not taking you seriously. And, um... Ghost number one shows up. Ghost of the past. And she's like, Come with me, we're gonna go visit your past. And they see a couple different times. I guess Scrooge, like, forgot what he was like. I don't know. Like, Scrooge's past is, like, shit. Oh my god, his life was horrible. Um, which doesn't excuse you for being a dick, by the way. And Scrooge is like, bitch, you don't know my life? So then the ghost is like, alright, okay, I mean, I don't know your life now, but I'm the ghost of Christmas past, like, I knew what your life was. Then he goes back to his bedroom, and the ghost is like, you're gonna see more ghosts tonight, but I gotta go. And so the ghost leaves, and Scrooge goes back to bed, still probably thinking this is a dream, you know, any excuse to not take responsibility. So... Then it's the ghost of Christmas present uh, pops up. He's always like, come and know me better, man. Like he's this big giant, like redheaded goof who's like, the present. They go to like Bob Cratchit's house. And Bob Cratchit is like, has like a wife and like all these kids. And the ghost says, here comes Bob now with another member of his family, and it's Tiny Tim, this cute-ass little boy who walks with a crutch, so, you know, tugging at everybody's heartstrings. Tiny Tim's like, oh my god, mm, sad. And Jacob is like, no, not Jacob, uh, Bob. Bob is like, ugh, oh, what a beautiful Christmas spread, my wife. And she's like, it would be more beautiful if we could afford a turkey, but we don't got shit because Scrooge does not pay you anything. And Bob's like, it's the important thing that we're here together. It doesn't matter if we can afford a turkey. And like, you would think that Bob Cratchit would be like, fuck Scrooge, he's a piece of shit. Like, he lets me fucking freeze in the cold. But no, Bob Cratchit is like, you know what? Scrooge really isn't that bad. And everybody in the Cratchit family is like super jolly, even though they have no money. Bob Cratchit stands up and he's like, you know, to Scrooge. And the wife is like, no, 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 no whatever. If, if he was here, I would, you know, tell him a piece of my mind. But she's like, I'll toast to him to support you, you know, to Ebenezer. And, you know, it cuts back to Ebenezer and the ghost, and he's like, Spirit, will Tiny Tim live to see next year's Christmas? The ghost says, I see a crutch without an owner in the future. Which, that's, that's not what anyone wants to hear. Basically, he then shows him, like, 
he like lifts his like cloak and there are like two skinny like horrid children under his cloak they're like i'm starving and they're like hee 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 like demon kids and scrooge is like creeped out which duh ditto and then the ghost is like i gotta go there's one more person who's coming to you tonight and boom gone so scrooge is back in his room and he's like damn all right son let's see what's in my future and what's in his future is death and like like lightning strikes and they're in a fucking cemetery and the ghost of motherfucking future shows up and he is the grim reaper like they she i'm gonna say she why not and so the ghost of christmas future takes scrooge and they see this group of men that are standing around talking and they're laughing and saying it's gonna be a cheap funeral no one's gonna go this dude who died nobody cares and scrooge is like who are they talking about and the creepy guy the creepy ghost of christmas future is like and scrooge looks down and it's his own grave and he's like i want to be better and future's like do it. So then like Scrooge wakes up and he's like, oh my gosh, it's like all a dream. Even if it was a dream, like I learned something. So he goes to the window and he opens it up and there's this boy running by and he's like, hey boy, hey boy, what, what day is it? And he says, why well, it's Christmas day, sir. And Scrooge throws him some money and says, go buy me the biggest turkey that you can possibly find. And the boy says, okay. And he just trusts him, I guess. And then he takes it to Bob Cratchit's house and they have a giant party and then Scrooge is no longer an asshole. So basically like, don't be a dick. Be nice to poor people so that people will show up to your funeral. Treat others kindly. But then like, uh, then like the tiny Tim guy, he's like, comes out and he's like, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Or is that, is that Rudolph? I don't know. I think, I think it is, I think it is a Christmas carol. It's like, where Tiny Tim's like, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And I think that's how it ends. And so as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us.